So now that we've officially entered the off season, or at least on this channel, I wanted to take some time going over the prospects from the last NFL draft and seeing how they played throughout their rookie seasons. To start, I wanted to look at Jordan Brooks. Before we begin though, if you can do me a huge favor and like and subscribe below, I'd greatly appreciate that. So anyways, the Seahawks took Brooks at the end of the first round. It was clear they did this as a future replacement for KJ Wright. Also, they really needed speed on their defense. Facing quarterbacks like Kyler Murray and now Trey Lance in the ultra-competitive NFC West, this was 100% necessary. From his scouting report, one of the main concerns people had with Brooks was his pass coverage. They looked at his role during his final season in college, where he blitzed and played spy for the vast majority of his snaps, and they deduced that Texas Tech did not trust him in coverage. This was 100% not the case. As we discussed in my video last offseason, this was simply a product necessity. Texas Tech needed extra help rushing the quarterback. Instead of Brooks dropping into hook curl zones and carrying that third receiver on seams down the field, Brooks was asked to stay close to the line of scrimmage and blitz. He was super effective at this, creating a pressure on 37% of his snaps. I also mentioned in my previous video that during his junior season, that's where he showed the ability to drop into coverage. So with that out of the way, the obvious question you might ask is how did he do in pass coverage as a rookie? The truth is that he was pretty bad. Well, he was pretty bad to start the season at least, and he definitely got better. Out of the 86 linebackers with more than 150 pass coverage snaps, he was number 147 in yards allowed per cover snap. He allowed 1.6 on the season. Now you might be asking yourself, why isn't Sam worried and why is this video not about his failures? The reason for this is pretty simple. As I just said, he was pretty bad to start, but he definitely got better. In his first six games, he allowed almost two yards per cover snap. Meanwhile, in his final six games, that metric dropped down to 1.3. Now, I know allowing 1.3 yards per cover snap seems like a lot, considering that the best linebackers allow roughly half of that, but the point is that playing linebacker in the NFL is really damn hard, especially as a rookie during a COVID season. Even fellow rookies like Isaiah Simmons and Patrick Queen, who also won the first round, they also allowed roughly 1.2 yards per cover snap on the season. What I'm trying to say is that Brooks isn't that far behind. In fact, it's those improvements that get me really excited. Let's look at an example versus the Cardinals in Week 7. This happened on 2nd and 10. The Seahawks were playing cover 2 where Brooks was the weak side hook roll defender. His responsibility is the number 2 receiver on his side of the field. He also needs to be aware of the number 1 receiver to the side as well. Now, the Cardinals are running a bench route towards the sideline. The number 1 runs the go, and the number 2 in this case is DeAndre Hopkins. He runs the bench route to find space between zones down the field. Let's look at what happens. As Brooks drops, he loses Hopkins in space. Hopkins runs the bench route curling around him, and he stems back towards the quarterback on the left sideline. It's at this point where Brooks should have already started sprinting. If he was aware of what Hopkins and the offense was trying to do, he should have driven to take this away. Now, nowhere am I saying that this is an easy play. But remember, this is the NFL. Brooks is going to see this concept in plays like this each and every day. He has to get better at shutting down plays like this one. Before we look at another example, I want to give a huge shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this week's video. HelloFresh is here to make eating better and easier. No grocery stores, no stressful meal planning, just everything you need to prepare a wholesome, delicious meal all delivered to your door. I honestly have no idea why I've waited so long to try it, but trust me, it was definitely worth it. This week, my wife and I tried the spicy maple chicken. It was so incredibly good. This meal is one of their Hall of Fame recipes, and needless to say, we were very impressed. The produce was fresh and had a ton of flavor, the meat was portioned perfectly for both to share, and the recipe was so easy to follow, it made the entire experience effortless. HelloFresh has more 5-star recipes than any other meal kit, and they can all be finished in just about 30 minutes. Now, not only was everything delicious, but what honestly took the experience to the next level was just how flexible they were for my lifestyle. You can easily change your delivery days, you can add extra dinners or lunches to your orders, and in general, HelloFresh just makes the process so simple that I strongly recommend giving them a try. If you go to HelloFresh.com and use my code SAMGO12, you get 12 free meals, including free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code SAMGOLD12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. Alright, so before the break, we looked at an example of where Brooks didn't do a good job in coverage. Let me show you how he improved throughout the season. Take this play from his wildcard game against the Rams. This time, the Rams are running a bootleg to the right, where Brooks is the weak side hook curl defender. Please note that in this play, the Seahawks are actually in cover 3. After the snap, Brooks took inside leverage walling off the tight end towards the sideline. The minute that Tyler Higby broke on his route, Brooks was ready. He flipped his hips, drove towards the upfield shoulder, and he made the throw difficult for the quarterback. Goff had no choice but to throw it over the top and the pass fell incomplete. Outside of plays like this last one, what I really liked seeing was how well his awareness improved throughout the season. He just seemed so much more prepared in each game he played. To me, this speaks volumes to him as a player. 
It shows me that not only does he have the physical talent to play in the high-powered NFL, what it shows me is that he also has the ability to take coaching and learn from his mistakes to improve. This is everything, and it really can't be understated. Moving on, the other area Brooks improved at was how he defended the run. Brooks got much better at using his hands to keep his frame clean. This is so fundamentally important for a linebacker. If you watched my last video on Micah Parsons, this was an issue that both Brooks and Parsons shared in college. More so for Parsons, but Brooks definitely need to get better at this at not using his shoulders and body to stick on a block. Brooks got better at this throughout the season at using his hands to stack and shed blocks in order to make plays. On top of this, another thing that Brooks got better at was that he used those hands in order to squeeze run lanes. What would happen in college was that he would get in position but wouldn't squeeze the gap to help out the rest of his defense. He improved at this greatly over the course of the year. He was much better at using his hands in hip position in order to gain leverage and that helped force the running back to cut back inside. Let's look at an example. This came from the same wildcard game we just broke down earlier. The Rams were running strong side outside zone. With the alignment of the two tight ends attached to the formation, Brooks was responsible for being the force on the edge to stop the running back from bouncing the run outside. His goal is to get in front of the tight end, use his hands and hips to squeeze the running lane, and hope that the rest of the defense will help tackle the running back. Let's look at what happened here. Brooks got in front of the tight end, he used his inside hand to get underneath Everett's shoulder pad to gain leverage, and this helped force the running back inside. Then he repositioned his body to shed the block, and he tackled the ball carrier for minimal gain. While this play appears simple and pretty routine, it's actually a low-key amazing play. Brooks took the correct angle to start, there was no missteps in the beginning, his hand placement was perfect, and he had the strength and technique to shed the block and make the play. I give this a solid A+. Now one thing I mentioned in my scouting report on Brooks last summer was that I expected him to be used more on rushing the passer. My reasoning for this was pretty simple. The Seahawks didn't have much in terms of a pass rush threat, so they could use his skills in this area. However, this didn't actually happen. He only rushed the passer 30 times this past season. This was mainly due to Carlos Dunlap entering the team, as well as Jamal Adams breaking the defensive back sack record last season. Now, as far as those 30 pass rushes went, Brooks created five pressures, and the majority of that came in the first half of the season. I think with him becoming more utilized in pass coverage duties, I just don't imagine him rushing the passer a ton next season either. Overall, and to wrap up this video, it's those three improvements that get me really excited for Brooks next season. He improved at using his hands to take on blocks, he improved at body positioning in order to squeeze the running lane, and his pass coverage awareness and route recognition also improved too. These three improvements give me a lot of confidence in him as a player. Now, I do understand that many Seahawks fans still want the team to re-sign KJ Wright. Wright is still a great linebacker. He had a very underrated season last year. However, as much as I love KJ, I'm completely okay with this decision. Brooks is the future of this defense. Wagner isn't going to play forever, and the more snaps that Brooks gets right now, this will only help this team in the long run. Again, it's all about development. He improved a lot as a rookie, and he needs more time and more snaps in order to make that happen. I think we'll continue to see him improve as he enters his second year, especially now that he'll have a true offseason. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Next up, we'll talk about another rookie and their play during the 2020 season. The player I'm going to talk about next is Antonio Gibson to the Washington football team. He's going to be dynamic next season, and boy, am I happy to watch his film. If you haven't already, please do me a favor and like and subscribe below. I'd greatly appreciate that. As always, thanks again for watching, and you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.